Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Adrift. This is uh, ADR1FT. It's a high octane space shooter set in the uh, the Thebulus ring of the... No, it's not actually. This is a... Um, it's a hard sci-fi, and I don't mean in that in the sense that it's difficult. It's the genre of hard sci-fi, realistic sci-fi, I guess you might want to call it. Uh, narrative adventure game. If you wanted to be probably over-reductive or overly reductive, you could call it Gone Home in Space. Uh, I feel like I can call it Gone Home in Space. I actually really liked Gone Home. But I feel like if I said Gone Home in Space, people would treat it as an insult. But at the same time, I feel like probably if you like Gone Home, that gives you the, the vibe that you're looking for. Um, I've played about 45 minutes of Adrift so far, and honestly, uh, normally I like to put in a little bit more due diligence, and I think it's fair to put in a little bit more due diligence, but, uh, this game triggers a little bit of motion sickness for me, so I find extended play sessions a little difficult, and it will probably trigger a little bit of motion sickness in you if you're, uh, you know, primed for that sort of stuff, uh, but if you're not, you should be good to go here, but it does de uh, involve six degrees of motion here, so prepare for that. Um, we're gonna get started here. I'm just gonna go new game, because I don't want to spoil anything. This is basically a game in which you fly through space in your EVA suit, which basically your, your space suit, and, um, collect... Let, let me back it up a little bit. You play as a character who wakes up in a space station with no memory of what actually happened, uh, and it's been destroyed, so there's just space debris going all over the place. Excuse me, sir. I'm trying to talk here. We'll go through EVA training together. Um, but, uh... Yeah, it's basically like the, the start of the film Gravity, how everything goes completely tits up, and they're flying around trying to make sure that they actually make it back to Earth. It's a bit like that, um, and your, uh, your goal is to basically fix up the... Uh, escape pod on your ship so you can actually get back down to Earth. But in the course of playing the game, you discover audio logs and journals and stuff like that, and the journals kind of fill in what was going on with the crew and also um, what what actually went wrong with the space station. So it is a little bit of a mystery in that sense, but I don't believe there's any supernatural uh, overtones or anything like that going around. So this is... Um, this is the main mode, and in fact, perhaps the only gameplay of the game. Uh, it is a little bit of a thin conceit, if that makes sense. And it's something that I, I, I wouldn't say I hold against it, but something that I'm not necessarily fond of, is that in terms of robust mechanics, uh, they, they aren't really here. This is definitely much more of a minimalistic game. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, but, one second, what is boost again? A, I think. Yeah, boost is A. I'm just trying to complete the tutorial objectives here. The very first thing that everybody says about a drift, and there's nothing you can take away from it in this uh, category at all, is that it looks goddamn gorgeous. Not only uh, in static, but also in motion as well. Um, it, it's really a beautiful game, and this is a game that, uh, as I understand it, is VR enabled and perhaps even VR focused. So, the fact that I am playing it uh, not on a VR console or a VR peripheral if you want to call it that I think is relevant if you already have access to uh, to oculus or maybe you're one of the very very lucky people to have a vive already um, I would definitely recommend checking it out because I can see how this would totally immerse you into the experience and uh, it honestly on a controller it feels a little bit more like almost a tech demo demo is the way I would describe it uh, it is a complete game but it's also um, it's a whoa certainly feels like one of those things that would be more immersive and maybe even a little bit more meaningful and worthwhile if you had, uh, you know, a little bit of VR strapped to your face. But it is available, and I imagine the majority of customers for the game, at least at this point in 2016, are still probably not VR enabled. So I, I don't think it's like not doing the game justice to to look at it from a non-VR perspective either. Uh, again, if if you didn't take my um, if you didn't take my feedback seriously regarding the uh, potential for motion sickness here, then hopefully you do now after I've done a couple of flips. This is basically me uh, doing the tutorial here and also explaining what's going on. So what is the actual moment-to-moment -moment gameplay like? Well, your broader objectives are fixing your escape pod and getting back to Earth, and then your... Uh, Finding journals, figuring out what happened, but mostly you see that oxygen bar down in the bottom right. And I'm not talking about a place where you go with your friends and sniff out some tangerine flavored oxygen, feel like you could, you know, run a marathon. This is actually, um, basically simultaneously our life bar, as well as our fuel, if that makes sense. And we have these, uh, we have these tanks out in front of us, which we can grab and then huff on those, and that fills up our oxygen bar. So every time I, uh, use thrust, Every time I use thrust, you can see it goes down a little bit. And then every time I um, break, it goes down. Every time I break, it goes down. Ascending, it goes down. Uh, 
declining, it goes down, or descending, I guess. Uh, beyond that, it also goes down over time because you have an oxygen leak in your suit. But I do believe that you can repair that fairly early on here uh, once you actually start up the game. We may or may not see that over the course of this. Um, the reason I call it a health bar as well is because if I crash into uh, this wall at high speed, you'll kind of see what happens here, hopefully. Yeah, it took a lot more oxygen off, and in the actual game, outside of the tutorial, uh, the more you bump into stuff, the more that's going to exacerbate the supposed oxygen leak in your uh, in your suit, and oxygen will actually leak out faster, thereby costing you health uh, and fuel as well. So it's the balance between, I want to get somewhere quickly so that my um, my oxygen doesn't run out, but also, the quicker I try to get somewhere, the more oxygen I'm going to lose in the process. So it's it's kind of a cool conceit. Uh, doing these uh, EVA moves was was fun for a while, but it does for me start to wear a little bit thin um, after I had played for uh, for a little bit more time. And I, I did kind of I was going into this game really excited because the marketing for it was really really well done. And I'm I'm a sci-fi fan. I wouldn't say that you know I'm a fanatic necessarily, but I also feel like the animations are really well done and the art design, direction, and execution are wonderful. But I will admit, about 15 minutes into the game, I kind of found myself being like. You know, the Strokes 2003 album, Is This It, right? I was kind of like, it feels like, um, I don't want to say it feels like a shell or a harness that a, a more robust game could exist within, because I really do feel like they probably made the game they wanted to make here. It's not like a failure in terms of execution. It's just sort of not as compelling as uh, as other narrative adventure games that I've played. I'm trying to think, because like... Gone Home is the one that I always go back to, but there was one... Oh, Firewatch, yeah. Firewatch is actually a really, really good comparison in the sense that it looks beautiful, and apparently it has about the same or a, a comparable level of length. Um, I believe that... Firewatch, for me, ended up being around four hours, maybe three to four hours. Um, and I've heard from people that have actually finished the game that this probably clocks in at around the same. The difference is that, for whatever reason, I find it a little bit more frustrating to, to kind of locomote and get around in this game, probably because you're in a spacesuit. And the story I found a little bit less compelling, and there's no, like, characterization in the sense that you get dialogue back and forth between you and Mission Control or something like that. And there's no, um... I'm gonna finish the loading screen there. Um, if, let me put it this way. If you're as bad as I am... As bad as I am at navigating three-dimensional space, uh, you will have a hard time getting kind of the momentum of characterization that'll make you care about the characters as well. Like, by the time I came across the first few audio logs, I was like, mostly I just really suck at getting around this space station. Um, we're about to wake up here, and then you'll see what's going on. Survivor located. Initializing EVA HUD display. Any, any minute now. There we go. We're coming to life. And notice, as we do this opening section here, how absolutely beautiful the game looks. I really can't take that away from it, and I, I feel like I may have a slightly different opinion on the experience if I was in VR. Like, the level of detail and the actual uh, polish on the assets is amazing. Not to mention the, the sense of scale you get from looking down at that big blue marble, right? This is not me doing this, by the way. This is the game doing it. Alright. Pretty soon we gain control here. You can see we starting to crack spacesuit with uh, with our oxygen leaking. You may have thought, and again, I'm not trying to stress that there's there's anything wrong with this, but you may have thought I was joking when I said that the entire game consists of basically locomoting around the environment and picking picking up oxygen canisters to keep yourself uh, alive while also going to get uh, you know journal entries and of course your your macro objective of uh, actually keeping the ship uh, or uh, fixing the repair pod so that you can uh, get out of here. We're gonna try to do that. I also, I, I have a little bit of problem with the gameplay abstraction that anytime I bump into something even like a little bit, like just a slight slight nudge here. Let's try this. Here we go. There we go. That actually contributes to our oxygen going down more in the future. I get that it's kind of to make it like your health mechanic is also the same thing as your fuel, which is kind of a cool concept. Um, you know, there's games that use ammo as HP, for example, and, and I think that's cool, but... Uh, in this, for some reason, it doesn't work to me, because whenever I bump into something, because it's kind of clumsy to get around, I'm like, oh, you know, fuck you. <laughs> I don't mean it to be indignant, I mean it more to be like, oh, I didn't touch it. I just bumped into it. Alright. What is cool is, uh, I do like the idea... 
first off, there's a lot of really desperate moments. Like, for example, you know, you could be flying past this thing really quickly, and then you reach out for it and just kind of miss it and then float away from it, and you don't have enough fuel to get back to it. Oh, my God. My legs barely touch the floor there. Um, I think that's that's a really neat... Um, hey, now. Uh, that's a really neat idea. Uh, and, and it creates kind of those moments of panic that are, that are neat. Um, and I'll say neat a couple more times over the course of this episode, if you don't mind. I also... Oh, I barely... Touch. I can't see where my legs are, game. Cut me some slack here. Um, I also feel like um, it creates kind of an interesting trade-off between getting somewhere quickly and maximizing your chances of getting there. Um, because the faster you go somewhere, the more thrust you use to get somewhere, the more oxygen you're using, thus the more pressure you're going to be under in order to kind of uh, get oxygen canisters in order to keep up that pace, plus you're going to be bumping into stuff more often. In a way, it's a novel conceit for the game to actually force you to play it at a more meaningful pace, or a more thoughtful pace, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. It actually gives you a good gameplay reason to go slow beyond just, hey, these environments are beautiful, spend some time in them. You know, we implore you, we spend a lot of time working on these environments, so please, you know, take a look at them. I think it gives you a meaningful gameplay conceit for that, um, which is cool, and it does give you some time to stop and, and smell the roses a little bit, and that's really, I think, what the... Uh, what the strength of the game is. The, the biggest strength of the game, in my opinion, is that it's gorgeous. Um, and unfortunately for me, as someone who's more mechanics focused, which, by the way... Oh, we're getting a mission control message. There may come a moment where we can talk back to mission control, but I, I haven't come across it yet. Admittedly, I did like the 15 minutes of EVA training, and then I kind of just floated around for like a half hour trying to figure out where the heck I was supposed to go. But, um... By the way, I want to point out that it is a little bit of a shortcut to sound like you know what you're talking about and like you have good taste to be like, Oh, I... Graphics are important, but I'm more of a mechanics-focused gamer. I care more about the, you know, what's inside as opposed to the beauty... Okay, like, almost everybody, I think, is like that at this point in time. Or maybe people my age are like that, um, for the most part, you know. I, I think it's clear if you're watching this, you know, you're into indie games, a lot of which may not have the most technically impressive, uh, you know, visual pedigree, um, but at the same time make up for it with uh, with meaningful gameplay. I'm not trying to say the game has meaningless game gameplay, I'm rather just trying to say that I, I don't buy into the... I don't buy into the narrative that it's pushing out, I guess. Not that I don't think that it's the truthful or valid, I just don't think, you know, the... The hazard of getting to, from point A to point B is uh, is compelling enough to, to make me be like, oh, I'm really looking forward to like picking up the next journal. But uh, some people may feel differently. I had seen that there's a lot of uh, a lot of Steam reviews. They're mostly positive. I think that's fair. Uh, I also read a few uh, critics reviews. I actually played the game for myself on on Monday, just before the critics reviews had actually come out, or Sunday night actually. Now that I think about it, just before the critics reviews had actually come out, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that this is going to hit like sevens for most people, and that's pretty sure, or that's that's pretty much where we've ended up. And I think that's fair. Um, this is almost a game that I would, you know, sometimes people say, oh, this is more than the sum of its parts. I kind of feel like for me, a drift is exactly the sum of its parts. I find the actual process of playing the game occasionally interesting but oftentimes kind of you know me just floating on rails uh making sure i get to these oxygen canisters and you know i, I don't believe at any point we pick up you know like a, a a rail gun or something like that and i don't mean that i want it to be a first person shooter i mean more that i, I feel like I, I could understand how this uh gameplay loop would run its course after well before four to five hours i guess but that being said i did beat firewatch and i had a good time with firewatch and i wasn't bored by the end of it but um I guess for whatever reason, Firewatch was a, a little more compelling because... Probably because of the dialogue, honestly, that you have uh, between characters that kept me into it. So maybe if you're into this more kind of, like, isolated vibe, um, you'll you'll be interested in this. I also think it does a really good job of asking you questions, if that makes sense. Or forcing you to ask questions. Like, I'm looking at this now, and I'm like, what the heck is this? Is, is this the reactor that we're using to drive the ship? Is this, uh... Give it a sec. Can you hear that? Oh, no, it's, it's gone now. Um, it's, uh, th this could be anything, man. This takes place in the near future, which I always find, like, one of the more interesting time periods. Because you're like, this has to be, you know, some kind of... It has to have as ancestral origins in our current technology, but I have no idea what this is for. Um, we might be able to actually interact with this computer over here, now that I think about it. Let's go get this SSD. And when you pick up these solid... I think I got hurt by bumping into that SSD at first there. Give me the SSD! Excuse me. 
Excuse me. Oh, now, no, don't slide up under it. Are you kidding me? Get, grab it! Grab the hard drive! Alex! Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. I think we might have to let that one go. <laughs> Bumping into shit, taking too much damage. Okay, slow your roll. That's like when you got your fingernails cut too short and you drop like a dime on a coffee table or something like that. All right, what's going on at this audio terminal? We can scan to see interactable objects. Um, I don't think this one has anything. Maybe if we had the solid state drive, we could put it in there, but uh, I messed that one up royally. Let's open this up. And pretty soon we'll find the escape pod, and that's kind of where they introduce the, the overarching objective of the game. Um, but honestly, it's kind of a weird candidate for a let's look at, because I... I mean, I normally I try to do like a 20 to 30 minute video and explain what the heck is going on. Uh, but you're kind of seeing it right here, if that makes sense. Like, this this is the game. I'd like to at least get to an audio log so you... Oh, our, our visor's cracked. We can actually repair it in like the next room, I think. Um, it, it, we're still sort of in the tutorial for the game, if that makes sense. Because there are uh, different stations we can come across. Like this one, for example. And that'll repair our oxygen leaks uh, and allow us to... Allow us to be a little bit more safe as we go out here. If we just hold X, we should not bump into it. We should instead get inside of it and uh, and heal ourselves. It's a very, very lonely game. And I think that's a vibe that they tried to hit um, intentionally. And uh, like A game that, that deals with isolation and loneliness is not at all a bad thing. But in a weird way, it's it's a tall task. Because with just me and, like, the suit occasionally talking to me and mission control pinging in to be like, Hey, are you there? Hey, and we never respond. Like, I find myself honestly getting a little bit bored. And I, to some extent, that's the kiss of death for me. But for some other people, they may they may find this pensive or, you know, thought-provoking. This is our, um, this is our room right here, I think. Oshima. Her name is Oshima. Got a PhD in astrophysics. Trying to see if we can get any more information there. I mean, you really have to make an effort to care about the characters, which is not a, a bad thing at all. Um, it just depends on, you know, how much you're willing to go on that your mileage may vary type aspect. Well, your knees keep bumping into the freaking door here and lowering your maximum HP. All right, from Shocking at Hardeman Aerospace, which is the company that made this spacecraft that has had a problem here. I've reviewed your Spiritus, Spiritus production plan ahead of review. You're tracking positively, and I remain optimistic. Regarding your alternate proposal, I can see very real benefits here, and the data supports your plan around increased Spiritus production methodologies. The opportunity to implement parts of this plan into our current efforts exist, and frankly speaking, are innovative. That being said, I believe it is imperative that you not deviate from current objectives. The health of your crew, your station, and our mission have all been negatively affected by delays and extended timelines. Stick the plan, close this down, and bring us home, Commander. This is your moment to shine. Mission director for this. Okay. Director Hawking, I've prepared and packaged the requested data materials. Hand four, Administra has been instructed to schedule has been instructed to schedule and conduct a full briefing for you and your staff. I've also included an alternate and aggressive spiritist production proposal that I believe warrants discussion and consideration. This is something I believe we can accomplish within our dates with minimal impact and maximum benefit. I look forward to your review and comments. Uh, 04 September 2037, 2037 has been identified as Luna 2 settlement date. Details around official briefing and announcement are being finalized and will upload to Hand for Administra within 72 hours. In advance of this information, I'm taking the opportunity to remind you that the initial success of our lunar colonization effort rests on you and your crew's shoulders. Spiritist progress is encouraging, but leaves little room for failure. I'd like a full mission update, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. So we're, we're learning something uh, about the about what maybe has gone wrong here. We, as captain, tried to... Uh, Tried to push up the date of, or maybe speed up the timetable with which we were doing things here. Perhaps that led to things going wrong. Honestly, I have no idea. Um, I, I haven't gotten to the end of the game. And probably will not, if that makes sense. Uh, at the risk of sounding a little bit rude, I actually feel like the story of the game is really interesting. But I'd be more inclined to experience it if it was in the form of a short story or something like that. Hand for personal data device version 4.7 acquired. Multiple personal data devices detected and online. Location coordinates unknown. Oh, I thought that um, there was actually 
going to be some audio logs playing there. But I think we'll get more that we can actually play as time goes on. I don't want that audio log to come back and hit me. It may actually not be able to hit me. Um, there should be some, like, mission control type dialogue or, or suit dialogue coming up in just a second here as we enter the Han 4 Cerebrum. Warning. Catastrophic event detected. Core systems repair required for emergency escape vehicle launch. All right, yeah, so to launch the, I think it's the Salvus that is the escape pod. To launch that, we need to repair it. And I think that this is our, um, this is kind of like our central hub room that we're going to use uh, in order to kind of branch out and experience other areas. And it's really cool. Like, the world building that they've done with this game is awesome. It, it does a lot of good, uh, like, Tell, what is it, teach without teaching, I guess? It, it implies the existence of things without you going into exp exposition with mission control and being like, well, you know, have you checked on the greenhouse up there? We got 32,000 saplings we need you to put in the terrarium on, on the moon. Hey, if you mess this up, humanity's doomed, right? Like, it doesn't go through that dialogue, which is usually less compelling than allowing you to figure it out for yourself just through the implications of the environment design. I really like that a lot. That being said, there is a lot of exposition in the game, considering that, you know, also... You're reading, like, a lot of dialogue a lot of the time. I also, and this is very much something that I re uh, register as p potentially just a me problem. Um, I get lost, like, fairly frequently. I think we can go into this, and there's, like, a console that we can activate and then get somewhere. But um, even though there's a scanner, it's not... 100% easy for me because I'm not an astronaut myself and I'm just bad at navigating 3D space in games to figure out where the heck I'm going. So I spend a lot of time being lost and in a way that kind of compounds uh, the problem that you may have with the slow nature of the game in that when you're lost, if you're like three minutes away from where you should be, it's going to take you three minutes to get back there. Um, so we need to fix the mainframe, fix the cerebrum, fix the core, I'm assuming. Cerebrum core corrupt. Mainframe offline. Cerebrum module inactive. Spirator system repair required for Salvis EEV life support system operation. Locate system mainframe. Okay, locate the mainframe. Fabricate, cerebrum Fabricate a cerebrum core. Repair, cerebrum repair, repair the cerebrum module. Confirm. This has given us our objective for the rest of the game. Um, and throughout the throughout the station, we'll find. Um, We'll find, like, uh, EVA repair stations and stuff like that, just in case we've done so much damage that our oxygen leak is, like, catastrophic. Um, but I really, without being offensive, I do find that it's kind of a thin conceit for a game. And I did say earlier, um, you know, I, I would prefer it maybe if it was a short story or something like that. I don't mean to say that this is not a game. I know that's a hot-button issue. I really liked Firewatch. I've played narrative adventure games, and... Uh, my mileage varies with them, but I'm certainly not, you know, completely against them by any stretch of the imagination. But I do sort of feel as I'm playing Adrift that it's a beautiful game with a compelling story that is kind of held back by the way that the story moves itself along on a mechanical level. Which is, uh, I, I think is is as kind as I as I would like to be. The, the unkind way that I'd, I would explain it is that it's a good story that maybe is a little boring. McDonough, Andrew, 17, April, 2037. Finally going home. Doesn't even seem real. 22 months since mission start. 10 longer than I signed up for in the first place. I promised Lucy I was going to be there for her. I promised myself I wouldn't leave her like this again. I broke both of those promises by taking another selfish paycheck job while real life passes me by. Father of the year. Alex really came through for me on this. I owe her one. Can't wait to get off this goddamn station. Well, I hope that you could hear that. Otherwise, that's going to be a weird, awkward period of silence. Uh, there is a lot of uh, dynamicness when it comes to the environment as well. Not in the sense that, like, you know, this is the forest space station, and then we go to the ice space station, and then we go to the lava space station. No, um, but there are a lot of, um, basically, exterior... Um, sections where we are going to need to go outside and that might be one of them right there and those tend to be a little bit more tense because you're, you're traveling long distances um without actually knowing for sure 
Comic Sans, man. Uh, you're traveling long distances without actually knowing for sure if you're going to be able to make it and then finding oxygen uh, canisters along the way. Transfer data for Lynn Collette. Let's read his emails. Alex Lynn contacted me already. Everything's in motion. Can't thank you enough for this. Got a, uh, got a lot of his time to make up for down there. Collins is solid. He's smart, eager, and doesn't have the baggage I do. He slated for hand five, so calling him up early will be a big break for him. Good choice. Maybe I can help with early beta. Let me know. Andrew Lynn Collette from Hardeman Resource will be contacting you to work everything out. She also places for Vancouver, so that will be good for you down the road. I'll need you right up to Spiritus Beta and Crew Expansion. So that looks like the 08 July transfer. Maybe even before then. I'm working out how to get to beta earlier, so it's a possibility for your replacement. I'm considering bringing up Misha Collins. Alex, absolutely interested. Visitation between Santa Monica and Vancouver will be a challenge, but we'll, it, uh, we'll, fig we'll figure it out. What are the details? Is there anything I need you to do to move the process along? Do I need to source my replacement? Thanks. Andrew, called in a favor and got a transfer lead for you. The job is in Santa Monica, heading up Han 5 Systems Assembly. I think your experience on this mission makes you a good fit. You know what works and what doesn't up here. You are in a unique position and what aerospace needs help in this area. Sorry, aerospace needs help in this area more than ever. I know this isn't perfectly perfect for you location-wise, but it's stable pays well and most importantly gets you off North Star this is time sensitive so let me know if there's something you still want to pursue I think at this point apart from actually literally fixing something we've pretty much uh, given you a footage of, of all the uh, major gameplay systems of, of Adrift here this is very much something that I think um, your mileage may vary on it's absolutely gorgeous and I, I failed this section multiple times. This is where I kind of find myself being like, I don't know where to go. Um, it's it's absolutely gorgeous, and certainly uh, it's twenty bucks, which I think, given the level of production here, is is quite reasonable. I wonder if we could just kite this oxygen tank along with us. But um, given the um, given the level of, of polish and production, I think is absolutely reasonable. And that's kind of like the price for. Um, you know, polished narrative adventure games now anyway. Um, if you have a VR-capable system and VR, absolutely check it out. Like, I, I think that um, the idea of having a, a headset on here and kind of feeling like you're actually immersed in the experience and, and maybe even feeling the physics of the experience, um, I don't want to say psychically, but you know what I mean, like tricking your brain to think you're actually floating up here and, and moving in the way that you move in this game, which is unique and novel. Um, I think that's interesting. Oh. And, uh, and could definitely be, be worth the price of admission here. If you don't... Excuse me? If you don't... I'm just waiting for a transmission there. Then, uh, honestly, I might think twice about it. This is a great opportunity to talk and drift here as we go. Um, I really don't know that there's enough here if you're not interested in, in basically the elevator pitch that I put out, which is, oh, I can't see my legs, I can't see my legs. The elevator pitch I put out, which is basically that this is a, uh, a gorgeous game that tells a story. I mean, it's a walking simulator, and I don't mean that in an insulting way, because I play a lot of them, but it, it is in many ways, and it, it's a little bit gussied up. The question will ultimately become if you think the narrative is worth the amount of time uh, that you have to invest in order to get it, uh, or if you actually find the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of, of flying around in your EVA suit fun, then that'll be uh, then this will be fun for you as well because this is what the game is. Um, but for me, it's it's a little bit too quiet, it's a little bit too slow, and if I'm being as diminishing as possible, I guess there's not enough what I would consider meaningful and weighty mechanics here to keep me coming back. Like, I enjoy, I think they've done a good job of making it feel right to float around in space, but I also don't find myself being like, you know what I really enjoy? Floating around and getting around this space station. And if you don't enjoy that, you're really here for just the story. Um, if you're here for, for just the story, you, I guess you've got to decide for yourself if it's worth it, but uh, I, I find myself questioning it and, and kind of looking forward to Hopefully having someone who who will play through the game tell me what actually happens. Um, so we're just getting into this next area here, which is a, a larger place. And I think will be uh, where we'll probably need to, to repair stuff. But uh, I'm just going to burn through a lot of boost here. Because I'm pretty sure that this is probably going to take us to the end of the video here. So uh, I don't mean to be super negative about the game. And honestly, I don't think I really have been super negative about it. Um, it, it has its own strengths, and I think those are as close to objective as you can get. Like, the game is absolutely beautiful. Um, but a, apart from that, I just don't know if there's enough here to kind of keep me coming back. And at 20 bucks, it, it's not really the price of the game that, that I take issue with at all. 
It's more um, it, it's more the length, if I'm being honest. Because if, if the mechanic of just using your EVA suit to get around was boring, but the story was really compelling and it kind of told it in like an hour, then I might be more inclined. Uh, then the price might be an issue at 20 bucks, but that's a whole other can of worms. Um, the, the problem for me is more like I don't enjoy playing it, and I also don't seem to get like the intele intellectual satisfaction you get out of... Um, out of not enjoying something, but like feeling deliberately uncomfortable or, you know, tense for narrative purposes, if that makes sense. What happens if we fly through one of these bubbles? Just want to see. Do we pop it? No, we just sort of push it away. Still, um, like this room is, is beautiful. In any case, um, this is going to do it for a drift. I hope that after seeing some footage, a lot of people will be convinced that this is actually the kind of thing that is super up their alley. Uh, I think a lot of other people are going to watch this and be like, Oh, I thought maybe that was going to be a little bit uh, a little bit more gamey. And I think that's fair too. Um, I mean, it is what it is, and it, it becomes that pretty quickly once you actually start it up. But uh, in, in a way, I think I was looking for something different out of the game. And uh, it's not necessarily the developer's fault that, uh, that I didn't get it, but... Um, this, this I find myself being like, ah, it's like Firewatch in space, but I enjoy it a little bit less than Firewatch. It feels like less of a human story, um, and, and more maybe even focused on the, the VR tech, but I, I can't say that for certain. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Ladies and gentlemen, we are floating in space. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future, and uh, of course, I'll be back with another Let's Look At soon and all sorts of other videos. For now, thanks for watching. If you want to check out uh, Adrift on Steam, there will be a link in the video description below. Go check it out. It's 20 bucks American. I got a review copy, which is what I'm reviewing it from here, and uh, I think that pretty much does it. I'll see you next time.